In today's Cubase Quick Tip video, I'm going to show you how to use the audio warp function to realign or quantize your vocals or any other track for that matter uh, to the project tempo. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate using this project first by giving you a general overview of what happened and why I'm time aligning, and then I'm going to show you how I time aligned it. So the basic gist is that I had the, the drum beats, I created uh, a full, uh, what would you call that, like a master loop. So I had a bass line, I have synths, I have shakers, I have uh, hi-hats, uh, and then I have some other synths and stuff going on. And then what I did was I was trying to find some vocals to add to the song's interest and whatnot. And I have a huge library of, I think it's Music Radar. Uh, they have this giant library of free samples and stuff. And they have a bunch of vocals in there. And I was just flipping through them, found a vocal that was really interesting. And actually it was a, a full set of vocals. So a lot of these vocal takes here is actually from the same singer and she's just singing these random little verses uh, at different pitches and different intensities and stuff and i've chosen some that i really like and this one here i really like but it did not time up uh, with the track that i'm working on or at least not in the way that i wanted so here it is actually aligned and what i was envisioning when i heard it So you can hear it's nice on time. It has like a an elongated slow, slow down like that. Originally, I will uh, remove the free warping here. And this was what I was working with to begin with. Slow, slow down. So very, uh, very fast and not articulated and did not meet, match the beat at all. So essentially what you're trying to do here, and I love, I love this uh, lower section in Cubase because it's perfect for this type of editing. Uh, actually, you know what, let's, let's describe what I had before. So actually what I was working with was something more like this. That's what I had to work with. And the thing when you're audio warping is that, let's say it was to try and stretch this out I can only stretch it as far as this event goes and uh, I wasn't able to stretch this because the sample was only this long what you have to do in that case is you click here to this events to part now you can elongate this as as large as you need it whatsoever so what I do is I elongate the actual sample to longer than what it is because that gives me more flexibility of stretching and creating anchor points. And then what you do is you bounce the selection down and you would replace the event. So now it's elongated. This kind of looks weird and dumb, but then what that does is it allows you to be able to stretch like this way out and then I can stretch this way out. So uh, that's an important step as well. So what I'm going to start with actually is the beginning of that uh, slow, of the word slow. So I'm going to grab the free warp and I'm just going to push this all the way to where I think it should start. And with the grid, I'm just going to start with the grid and then I'm going to play it and loop it potentially. So actually that's a good idea is I should loop it like so. That way I can just keep keep looping and keep tweaking. Slow, slow down. So that's way off. So I'm just going to delete that. Slow, slow Let's down. try it right on this beat. Slow, slow nope. down. Let's go halfway. Slow, slow down. A little bit better, but now I'm going to start experimenting and stretch this like here. So that section here is starting to sound much better. So I'm going to start working on this until I get this nice and lined up. And then I can uh, worry about this section later. Slow, slow down. Slow, slow down. 
there you go. So now you can hear that this section is bang on. Uh, I might need to adjust this. I might want to tweak the beginning of this word, but this part is bang on. So yeah, that's perfect. I'm going to create this as an anchor point. I'm going to delete this and this and this, and then this is just, I'm going to start from scratch on this side. Actually, that is a good anchor point as well, but I'm just going to line it up to the grid a little bit. Now we're going to see where we can, we're actually going to work backwards. So we're going to start lining this up and then we'll line this up because this seems to be the most difficult. It does still see, uh, sound like there's a bit of a delay here. So I'm going to try moving it further out. This section is starting to sound better, so I think time aligning to the, the peak point here to the grid and the start of this to this part of the grid. That sounds a little bit more accurate. I'll try, I'll try stretching it out further like this, like this, maybe in the halfway point. Uh, I might have to readjust this entire word like so. Who knows? I'll just keep looping it and see what happens. Uh, the other thing is, you can see here this little number, 0 0.61, and here you can see 1.32. That's giving you an approximation of how much it's being stretched. So this is at 0 0.61. This means that this is almost twice the size than it, than it originally was. If I go to 0 0.5, this is now twice the length for the same recorded piece of audio. So it's stretching it out twice as long and you can start to hear those artifacts. So that can kind of be a problem when you're stretching and free warping. You can experiment, I think, by uh, changing this section here. Let's see if we can go to Elastic Pro Formant Pitch. Let's see if that changes it. Um, maybe try the standard with vocals. Oops. So actually that kind of made it worse. You can hear in all these sections, it has like some kind of vibrato. So we're actually just going to leave that to the, the original one that was on there. And we're just going to keep tweaking. Well, that's kind of starting to sound a little bit better.
So this sounds, I think, probably a little bit more proper. <laughs> I must have spent quite a bit of time on the other one because uh, this seems to be more difficult than I remember. So let's compare the two. This is the original take that I had, and this is the the second one that we that I was demonstrating to you. And it looks like this section is quite uh, almost exactly the same, but just shifted over slightly in time. So this one is slightly delayed for this whole section. But it does look like I had originally set this to be a little bit more stretched out as opposed to what I did in the second time. So let's have a listen to the uh, original take that I did. So yeah, I don't know. Either one of these I think I would be happy with. Uh, maybe there's a uh, better algorithm to work with when using a single vocal take or a, a bass guitar or whatnot. Uh, either way, uh, like I said, this method works great for aligning uh, a bass guitar, uh, another guitar take. It's not suitable for when you have multiple lanes of drums and you're editing them as a group. This kind of just doesn't really apply in that sense, but that's fine because this uh, group quantize panel thing is perfect for uh, quantizing multiple drum take, uh, multiple drum tracks in one uh, all at one time, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I've made a video on this and uh, this thing is a breeze. It chops it up for you. You add the, uh, or you can do the audio warp function within, and then you can add the crossfades, and it's super streamlined. Very easy to use. You can add iterative quantizing. You could add swing. Just there's so much that's perfect for uh, multiple drum tracks uh, and quantizing them and stuff. So, yeah, hopefully you like this video, and uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.